Now we are going to discuss what's happening in North Carolina. The Department of Justice is actually going after North Carolina because of recent laws that they passed to suppress uh, voters in the state. Uh, now, during the last election, you guys can probably remember that multiple red states wanted to pass very restrictive voter laws in an effort to make sure that people who usually vote Democratic have a more difficult time doing so. Now we have a video explaining more about what's happening with the Department of Justice versus North Carolina. Let's take a quick look at that and we'll discuss. By restricting access and ease of voter <coughs> participation, this new law would shrink rather than expand access to the franchise. And it is especially troubling that the law would significantly narrow the early voting window that enabled hundreds of thousands of North Carolinians, including a disproportionately large number of minority voters, to cast ballots during the last election cycle. Just months after North Carolina saw the highest overall turnout in sheer numbers in its history in November of 2012, and within days of the Supreme Court's Shelby County decision to strike down key provisions of the Voting Rights Act, the state legislature took extremely aggressive steps to curtail the voting rights of African Americans. This is an intentional step to break a system that was working, and it defies common sense. So that was Eric Holder uh, doing a press conference just this last Monday. And I don't know how this recent government shutdown is going to impact uh, the Department of Justice going after North Carolina, but they do seem very aggressive in going after the state because of these voter laws. Now, just to give you some idea of what they managed to pass, and I should note, the governor didn't even know what the bill included when he decided to sign it. Uh, the press asked him about it, and he had no idea, but he signed it anyway, which is just crazy. But one thing that the bill does do is it shortens uh, early voting by seven days, which would really impact minorities because they actually take advantage of early voting the most. Another thing that it would do is it would increase campaign contributions to $5,000. So I like how comprehensive it is. Okay, let's, let's put more money into politics. Let's make it more difficult for people to vote. And it's very, very draconian. Another thing they want to do is they want to prevent same-day vo same voter registration, which which I don't really know why that's an issue. And then we'll discuss a little bit whether or not voter fraud is a problem and why they would want to pass something like this in the first place. Um, so first question goes to Rob. Rob, what are your thoughts on what's happening in North Carolina? And do you believe that this type of law or these types of laws will have a domino effect in the, in the country if the Department of Justice fails in this lawsuit? Well, to the last question, clearly the answer is yes. If you have a Republican state legislature and a Republican governor, you're going to get these laws in every one of those states. Um, there's a simple thing, which is voter fraud is a measurable fact that there's data and analysis that you can look at and say it either occurred or it didn't occur. And if it did occur, how can we prevent it? This is the way normal human beings deal with things. There has been no voter fraud. There is no voter fraud problem in this country. Every time we hear about voter fraud and it's actually dug into, you find that there wasn't any or it was one person or two people. Often people conflate voter registration issues with voter fraud, which are two very different things. Uh, and voter registration is dealt with in a very different way. So to me, given that that's the case, you then have to say, well, what is the reasoning to pass a law, given that there's not a problem that has a particular effect on a particular group of people? There are two possibilities. One is clearly the people who are affected vote Democratic more than they vote Republican, and it's just a naked power play to try to win more power. Or you can look at the other way, the harsher way, which is to say a lot of those people are minorities, a lot of those people are disenfranchised, and this is sheer, pure racism. And it's ugly, and it's nasty, and it's pernicious, and it has no place in our country. And the fact that we have five people on our Supreme Court who are willing to allow this sort of thing to happen and thought somehow magically that these problems were over in our country, they're delusional. Yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, Andrea just recently, uh, a little before uh, the Supreme Court decided to grant uh, the gay community some rights in this country, uh, they decided to basically gut uh, the Voting, right, <laughs> Voting Rights Act. And what do you think uh, the impact of that has been so far? Well, we'll find out in the next election if they sort of get away with it. I mean, my understanding there's 12 states that are doing something very similar to this. And to me, I mean, to both of Rob's points, yes and yes. I mean, it is very clearly racism to me. It's disproportionately affecting minority communities. And it is a power grab. So the same with the, you know, the sort of gerrymandering of districts. I mean, this is kind of the game people are playing in politics. And let's not pretend it's anything 
that could potentially be like noble or oh this might help some people or this is about voter fraud we all know it's not let's just call a spade a it's spade it's very transparent it's kind of incredible how transparent it is and how little um, outrage there is over this issue like the fact that this passed in North Carolina so easily and so many states attempted to do the exact same thing during the last election is just mind blowing um, so Lucas what do you think that the Department of Justice has to prove in order for uh, these laws to uh, be repealed? Well, unfortunately, in some of these cases, <clears throat> they are required to prove that there is intent to discriminate, which is a really difficult, uh, difficult thing to prove because it's hard to, you know, get inside the mind of someone that was passing passing this. Um, but also, as far as the VRA uh, being struck down, you know, it, within within 24 hours of that happening, Texas had already put back its voter ID law. Six states have passed it since it was struck down. So there's a clear intent there. And I think to the point that was made earlier, you know, the reason you're seeing this happen in states that are controlled by Republican <coughs> governors and Republican legislatures is that basically with uh, redistricting, they have successfully kind of gerrymandered these districts and, and uh, you know, are essentially moving to, in every way they can, institutionalize their power there because the demographics of the country are changing against them. So I see this whole thing as basically a way to hang on to power <coughs> for as long as possible because they see the writing on the wall and this is all they got. Isn't it kind of incredible? So if you can't win, but if you can't yeah. win legitimately, then you cheat. Then yeah, it's, you it's change the rules. It's amazing because usually the mentality is if you can't beat them, join them. And especially with the conservative Republicans, I mean, they're losing favorability among young people like crazy. I mean, young people weren't crazy about them to begin with, <coughs> Excuse me, but when you look at um, young Republicans, they don't identify as conservatives anymore. And instead of catering to them, the Republicans have decided, you know what, we're actually we're actually going to shift further to the right, and we're going to totally ignore what our young voters want. And instead, we're just going to do away with their right to vote. And to what you were saying earlier, Lucas, I think the Department of Justice will have a very easy time proving that this is for discrimination. I mean, think about the types of people that are going to be impacted impacted in a negative way because of these laws. How come, you know, I mean, when you really think about it, why, why are they targeting young people um, that are going to school in North Carolina out of state, right? Out of state uh, students typically don't have that state ID. So, I well, mean, issues like that come yeah, up and you're I just mean, like, okay, well, this is pretty obvious. I, I think it all just depends on which, uh, which circuit court they wind up in front of, though. Yeah. Because, I mean, the Supreme Court demonstrated that despite overwhelming evidence, I mean, you had the whole run-up to the 2012 election, all of these Republican states were seeking to do these discriminato discriminatory voting laws. And despite that, the Supreme Court says, oh, racism's over. We you know, this, this doesn't exist anymore. This isn't a problem. So if they're willing to, do, to go that you know that far I think you can make a, an airtight case mm -hmm. but a, the court may just decide we don't we don't believe in this we're you can, not gonna, you can we're strip away gonna. all of the sort of thumb on the scale language from this and just make it a really simple binary which is do you want more people to vote or less people to vote exactly so that's the simple thing if you remove fraud from the equation you say look we've looked there isn't a fraud problem in this country so there is a not enough people voting problem is this legislation helping to get more people to vote or less people to vote if it's less people to vote it's bad if it's more people to vote, it's good. It has nothing to do with Democrat, liberal, conservative. It's just like we're supposed to vote in this country. It's a democracy. Anybody who is against people being able to vote doesn't understand democracy and should move to a fascist country. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of incredible that they even bring up the issue of voter fraud because we have a hard enough time convincing Americans to go to the polls in the first place. The idea of them being so eager to vote and, and, and throw an election is laughable. We need more political activism, not less. I'm not saying we need more voter fraud. I'm saying we need more Some people to go. Fraud, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> well, well, of the voter fraud that does occur, because uh -huh. there is some legitimately that does occur, it is not in-person voter fraud, which is what photo ID laws are designed to, uh, exactly. allegedly designed to prevent. That doesn't exist. Nobody is showing up pretending to be someone else.